Uh, hello everyone. I hope that I'm live. The, I think the admins will let me know in the chat in a minute. Uh, welcome to another day of SquidCon. And uh, yes, my name is Lucas and I'm here to talk to you about uh, airbrushing. Um, so it's a bit of a big subject. Uh, we have 45 minutes together. So um, I wasn't really thinking of making any demos, but I would yeah rather like to take step by step different aspects of airbrushing um, and hopefully get some questions from you. Um, I hope that you will interrupt, uh, like post a question in the, in the chat uh, anytime you're wondering about something and uh, the admins will forward them to me. Um, so I, I will be really happy if you interrupt me and I can help you with uh, some specific points. Uh, yeah, I, I put up some slides as a guideline for myself and I'm going to try to follow. Uh, yes, so what I want to cover today, uh, airbrush, I would like to yeah, first see, go through what the tool does, uh, like what, what we expect, what we can expect from it, uh, then go a bit through its anatomy and uh, yeah, what, what happened, how it does, what it does, uh, which will help us understand a bit more yeah, what, what's wrong when it goes wrong? Like, where should I look? Um, then I want to talk a bit about paints and different additives, describe their different physical properties, uh, what we should look for in different situations, what we can expect from these different products. And finally, uh, go through yeah, my, my workflow when I use airbrush, uh, my routines, how I unclog my airbrush, how I maintain it, uh, and so on. Um, yeah, maybe before before I, I dive into uh, the first part, uh, I would like to yeah uh, underline big rules about this class. First rule is don't trust anything blindly. Like, but this course is for like, about any class, so I think you are aware of this. Uh, I gathered some knowledge, uh, which makes sense to me. I hope it will make sense to you, but if it doesn't, uh, please go and look for yourself, make your experiments, test things yourself, and then get convinced of what it does, what it does. Like there's no absolute truth in what I'm going to say today. Yeah, everything, every information I gathered is about, is like from uh, yeah, my use and what I've learned from YouTube. So all the information is up there. I hope that I will uh, help to uh, summarize some of it. And uh, yeah, second rule, uh, interrupt and uh, ask questions. So, why should we use an airbrush? Um, I have painted for a long time. I started when I was a teenager, then I had a big break, uh, with brush technique only. Uh, there were no contrast paints back then, so it was like layering only, uh, only learned at Games Workshop. And for me, the biggest thing that made me buy an airbrush is that it's gonna speed up my painting a lot. Uh, and this, I, yeah, I can really agree with this. Um, you can use it to blast some pigments on the army, set up some basic tones, like fix the colors, the ambience, and then you can or not uh, go with the brush, uh, add some details, and uh, you will have an army, you can have a really nice army much faster than uh, you would get without using an airbrush. Um, airbrush is good for gradients, this, it's the tool for gradients, if you want to do them fast. Um, if it's on a very small surface, you might have problems, and that's one of the cons of airbrush, it lacks precision in general, compared to a brush, uh, I mean. Um, so good for gradients, good for transitions, fast, and good for even application of paints also. Um, you probably already tried to, for example, block, uh, uh, yeah, block a, a first color uh, on your prime mini, and depending on the pigment, 
you might need several layers to, to get it and uh, not that you, okay, you, you will probably also need some several layers with the airbrush, but the thing with the airbrush is that you won't get, you won't see the brush strokes that you would get by priming the mini, yeah, let's say like a, a emerald green or something on top of black. Yeah, you will, she will see the brush strokes and it will take a lot of time. Airbrush, it will atomize the, the paint in an even layer. Okay, if you have some control, like you, you can also mess it up with the airbrush, but uh, yeah, it, it, it will help you get even layers and maybe faster, even applications of paint. Cons, what uh, kept me from getting into the airbrush also for a while, it's expensive. Um, you need, uh, I think uh, Squidma released a video recently where he said that you could get an airbrush set for like 50 bucks or something. Uh, I mean, yeah, go for this. I haven't tried it myself, so I cannot really comment. I went directly for the hardest steam bag. I think it's the Evolution that I got. Compressor, like I have to think. I don't have a dedicated workspace, so I also have, I have to think about, okay, how a compressor, I need the easy compressor, easy to store, to move. Uh, like, yeah, different, like all the additives and products that you will need. Uh, face protection, uh, mask. So there's a lot of stuff that goes around and that I think you should have uh, if you're about to get serious with airbrushing. Uh, so this is definitely uh, something that uh, maybe you have to wait for a while before getting into it. Um, there is a learning curve also associated with it. Uh, there is also one with the brush uh, per se, but maybe with the brush it's less noticeable. Like maybe, okay, my me won't look that great, but my brush won't clog. clog. Uh, I, I don't want really to. If I my brush, if I fuck it up, if I get pigments all the way up the 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 brush, then okay, I will buy another brush and maybe I use synthetics and it's not that bad. Uh, with another brush, like you, you have to fix the problem uh, right now. So this learning curve might be a bit annoying to get past. Uh, then yeah, the. Another con that I mentioned also already is lack of precision. Uh, you might get overspray uh, if you pulverize your pigment, depending on how you, well you control the, the direction of the, the flow. Um, but this, this can, uh, there, there are ways to remedy this. I'm gonna uh, go through it also. And uh, this can also be a good thing. Um, so, so in general, I would try to make the cons into pros, like find out ways how to use them. Um, uh, so we can go through this uh, together uh, later in more detail. And you need a dedicated space, like, um, yeah, you need a booth if you're gonna spray like priming base, uh, like base layers, you need to, to protect a bit your environment. It's gonna atomize particles of paint in the air, so that's not really cool to breathe. Um, and this might be problematic. Like I have, I'm airbrushing in my son's bedroom. Uh, so when I airbrush, like yeah, I would say heavy duty airbrush, uh, I need to do it during the day when he's at preschool. I have to set up the whole thing and then I have to clean everything before going to pick him up. So it's like I have to plan a bit. Uh, so this this can be also uh, some con considered as a con, and it needs maintenance. Yeah, as I mentioned, you have to to clean it properly at the end of the session because uh, you want to prevent the problems from happening. Like you don't want to face the problem and then have to have to uh, correct it. So this is really how you want to do things. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, yeah, uh, I found this great picture about uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, general like layout of the airbrush. So we, we use generally those airbrushes for miniature painting, uh, like double action. You press to release the paint. Uh, you press to release the air. You pull the trigger to release the the air. Put your paint there, and then the needle is there more the uh, like the sensitive part uh, in the front. And <coughs> what 
actually, okay, pain goes in, pain goes out, I pull the trigger, great. What, what the hell, what actually happens in this thing? So what happens is that <clears throat> in this, uh, so now I'm, I'm like looking at this, uh, the, the tip of the airbrush, I think you, you got it. So you have this needle that is keeping paint from exiting through the tip. And then air is flowing uh, and is flowing just like under, around the needle. Um, there's nothing preventing, like it's just a, the trigger. If you push down the trigger, air is going to flow out. And if you pull the trigger, this needle is going to be pulled back and paint is going to flow. So paint is going to flow along the tip of the, of the needle and then the air is going to atomize this paint into small particles and this is what's going to hit your miniature or whatever you're painting. So when there is a clogging happening, often it's at this connection, like where the needle it touches those red lines. Um, so if paint dries on the outside of the tip, it can be problematic. Like the, the the needle won't go back to its original position because it's like it's stopped by the paint, and then it creates even more clogging, more paints like dries on the needle, and then it gets messed up. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this is where the clogging happens. What can we do about clogging? Uh, yeah, the, so when we airbrush, depending on the paints that we have, they will have different properties, different pigments, uh, and we should know what we're using, what to expect from it, how to fix when it goes wrong, or like how to prevent problems. Um, so, in general, uh, for airbrushing, I have uh, two, um, yeah, I have two mediums that I'm using, which are thinner and uh, flow improver. Um, I'm using uh, those guys here. I can show you this. Maybe by the slides. Yes, uh, I'm using uh, those from Vallejo. Actually, the thinner. I also have this uh, with this. Uh, I tried the. It is a scale seventy-five. Yes. Um, uh, and this is what I'm using, uh, also water, uh, I have my small cups uh, with water, I can show you my setup later. Um, so those are the main products that I will mix with my paints uh, when airbrushing. Um, and why do I do this? So you don't want to have too thick of a paint through running through the airbrush. Uh, because, yeah, it's just not, not going to go, like, it, the paint has to flow along this tiny gap that you're going to create around the needle, and it needs to be quite thin, a bit thinned down to, to be able to go there. So regular acrylics won't go uh, through the airbrush. Uh, airbrush paints, though, if you want to have an idea of the, about the consistency, maybe you can uh, check those. Uh, yeah, because they are, yeah, you can use them directly through the airbrush. Uh, if you use regular acrylics, you want to thin them down. Uh, I use a mix of thinner and water. Um, and uh, yeah, this so thinner uh, reduces pigment density. Um, so if you want to think about thinner, um, I think I got this from uh, Vince Venturella, made a nice uh, explanation about this. So thinner, when it dries, is going to look a bit like this. And what it will do, it, it will capture pigments inside the small uh, alveoles here. Um, so if you add thinner, like you will effectively reduce pigment density because like you still have the same amount of pigments in the paint that you're putting. So you will have some of those boxes that won't have a P. And the more thinner you add, the more empty boxes you get in the end. Um, some thinners might get you a um, different finish, going maybe more towards satin, if you have 
too many empty alveoles. Uh, um, so yeah, but this this depends a bit on the on the on the thinness and the brand. Um, so this is this is what thinner does uh, effectively. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a mix of if you can think of it as a mix of water, alcohol, and retarder. It's gonna help the paints not dry. Yeah, you could mix it yourself basically with this ish, but I would I would heavily encourage you to use the pre-mixed and stable uh, uh, products. What is flow improver? The so flow improver. Uh, why why is it called flow improver? Uh, if you use it with a brush, so uh, if you use it with a brush, if you just put a, a drop of water with a brush, it's gonna build something like this on the surface. And what flow improver will do, it it will help break the surface tension, and your drop will look something more like this. So this is one of the things that flow improver does and why it's named like flow improver because like it flows better like this. Uh, but also uh, another good thing about uh, flow improver is that it has retarder in it. So it will slow drying time. And this is very important when you use paints that are not made for the airbrush like regular acrylics. If you just drop add some drops of uh, flow improver into your mix um, paint will be much less likely or like at least take more time to dry on the tip of the needle and this can be a great source of, of, of clogging if you don't do this thing and I learned about it very, quite recently actually I had this bottle uh, lying around like it's almost full still uh, but I, I started using it with uh, when I was make, doing my mixes with regular acrylics, and it's really good. Like it, it, it really does what it what it says. Um, so um, you don't need to add flow improver if you're gonna airbrush, let's say, uh, contrast paints uh, or uh, wash in ink or something like this. But for uh, or, or may, maybe actually you you will in some sense like depending on what what you get uh, it, does the paint dry on the tip of my brush yeah okay maybe pop a, a drop off uh, so improving there but yeah mostly it, it is about uh, acrylics mm, okay and I also saw an um, interesting uh, co comment in the video on YouTube that flow um, what was this about so um, yeah, better with non brush paints and primer. Primer, you don't want to reduce. You don't really want to reduce the amount of uh, of hexagons that you have here. Like you want primer to to build to a strong base, resistant base. So you don't want to alter the physical properties too much. And uh, if you want need to dilute it a bit and to prevent clogging, also. also uh, Flow improver uh, can be a good thing, but you don't want to have like those empty alveoles uh, for a primer. Um, and yeah, mm. and uh, some words about water. Depending on where you live, you might want to consider uh, using distilled water uh, because yeah, you have a lot of impurity. You can have. Uh, a lot of impurities in the water and those will also like uh, build up in the airbrush and and cause some cause some problems uh, here I don't use uh, distilled water myself here in Stockholm I feel like when I open the tap I get uh, source water directly from the mountain so I'm I'm haven't experienced any problem uh, but if you yeah, I know in some, some places like you don't really want to drink a tap water because you feel it's a bit there's something in it. And uh, yeah, that may be a good indication for, for using distilled water. And you could just get the the cheap one, like however it's the several ways to make distilled water, I think. But uh, whatever, like we don't we don't care about 
it being like bacteria free free or, or anything like we just want no impurities in it uh, yeah um, all right and uh, I think it's time to uh, for me to show you my workspace um, so how do I go about airbrushing uh, I will back this off a bit. Okay, so now I'm streaming, so there's this big screen in front of me. But usually what I would have, I have built, uh, like I put a big, uh, 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 what's it called, parcel uh, wrapping, like a carton, or I don't know, I'm not sure about the English word, but you will, uh, you will know. Like it's the, what my airbrush tank came inside when I ordered it from Amazon. I kept this wrapping. And I cut it open, and yeah, I have a surface, uh, like a part of it uh, on the desk, and then I have like a cardboard box, exactly, thank you, uh, in front here to prevent, uh, to prevent uh, yeah, overspraying the hell out of the room. Um, I will have two cups, uh, and those will be my dirty water in this one, with the dirty pipette. And the clean water. Uh, I started using these pipettes and I found that they were great for cleaning the airbrush. Uh, and I can show you uh, exactly how I do this. Uh, because before I was using this to put paint into the airbrush, but what this does instead is that it helps you clean the airbrush. So let me take this guy out of the box. And I can put some water in here, but you can see what I mean. My two cups. And one thing I really like to do, like I want to have, to have a clean space. Like when you're gonna airbrush, you're gonna have like uh, the hose from the compressor to the airbrush. You're gonna have your minis. So I really want things clear so that it really reduces the possibilities of fuck up when I when I paint. So that's why I have this guy for uh, dirty water and clean water here. So I imagine that I would have water in uh, in my airbrush, uh, paint in my airbrush like this. And when I want to change color, I would take this pipette. I can suck out the paint. I can. Uh, dump it into the dirty water, then I take a bit more of this dirty water and I flush yeah you see what's happening in the airbrush like this a couple of times, empty it and when I feel like I'm happy and I do a big color change or like I really want a clean color afterwards I would fill the airbrush with clean water and spray this uh, in my uh, in this guy right here uh, spray it like this um, it's. I think it's important to do like to clean the maximum of paint with this, not spraying through the nozzle because when you paint, you're gonna have paint drying inside the cup also. So this is also something I would do. I would like clean a bit, then have some dirty water, scrub a bit with my shitty brush uh, around the edges like this. Uh, I need to have my right here and then take out all this mess and maybe if I'm worried that there is some dried out paint I will do it one more time so this is the thing you don't want to have uh, like have dried paint in the airbrush uh, so yeah be worried about this and this is also why we want to clean the cup completely after after the use um, so yeah, this is how I remove paint from the airbrush, but I haven't told you how I put paint inside here. Um, I it depends if I'm using uh, yeah if I'm, I'm doing a mix myself. So if I would be mixing uh, my paints, like I don't take the paint straight out of the pot, I want to mix two colors. Uh, let me just. Yeah, no, you don't see the slides. Uh, I have my white palette over here. Uh, I put the drops, ta -ta -ta, make my mix, take, load the brush with, uh, with paint. And in this guy, I would have put before some uh, thinner. Where's my thinner? 
I think it's here. So yeah, I put like it, it depends on what you're doing also. Uh, but let's say three drops of thinner, three drops of uh, clean water, ta ta ta, one two three, and then you have a, a base of medium inside your airbrush, and I can come. Let's pretend that I have some. Uh, usually it would look something yeah like this. Uh, I'm sorry about the focus. Uh, and I would mix it on the side here. Mix it first here. So you, what you don't want to have is paint, let's say, from the bottle, going, dropping at the bottom and going straight on the needle because it's going to be difficult to dilute if it's stuck there. So what you want to do is dilute your paint before it drops down here. Uh, one thing I sometimes do that's a bit more dangerous. Let me get some uh, some paint drop bottle to show you what I mean. Uh, and this is, yeah, they, they, I mean, a lot of people have different ways to do this, uh, but I will show you the bad way that I sometimes do. Is that I have my medium like this, and I would put my brush like this and drop some. Uh, some drops of paint on the brush on the side like I don't drop my paint straight through the middle onto the needle but I would drop it on the side tuck, tuck. if I use the, the color strain from the bottle sometimes it's annoying like okay I have to do this I have to have the white palette uh, while I'm not doing any mixes so if I'm just careful I will uh, put the paint right in here uh, some, for some paints, you don't have to add uh, thinner, though. Um, so, maybe I can say a few words about the paints that I use now. Um, so, as you saw, I have some AK Interactive uh, that I'm really happy with for the airbrush. Um, I also have some uh, Bayer for Air that I have some really like strong colors. I don't have a lot of nuances. And those are the colors that I would use to put filters, like when I paint more display models. So uh, I would use this to, to put filters. And I will, I will show you all the paints, and then I will tell you a bit about different uses. Um, I have... Uh, some of those that are also great through the airbrush. Uh, it's like pro range, uh, uh, how's it called? No, not pro range, but artist range uh, paints, uh, like really strong pigments. Um, and they they go really well through the airbrush. Um, and maybe yeah, that's a good occasion to to mention this, like the the difference between air paints and acrylic paints more than the dilution it's also the how thin the pigments are ground um, if you take yeah the paint from your from your kids or from your like really cheap paint it will have big pigments and uh, those will cause clogging on the airbrush um, so paints like I think those are like they say that uh, you can airbrush them, so they must be uh, like thinner ground pigments. Uh, airbrush colors are obviously made for this. Um, so yeah, if you have problems, you can think about okay, what kind of paint am I using for my airbrush? I am also airbrushing uh, contrast colors uh, from Games Workshop. So this, these are the paints that really help me speed my painting. Like I would. Uh, air versus zenithal, the main colors, like I would uh, spray uh, some some contrast, it will give me some nice uh, lights and uh, really set up the, the atmosphere for, for the miniature. Um, and what else do I have? And for metal, I have some uh, inks also. 
from Liquitex. Uh, this is the guy that I mostly use, Titanium White from Liquitex, that I use for my uh, for my Zenitals. Uh, but yeah, if you if you are insecure, so usually I would like drop some. It, it does have a, like a small pipette inside. Uh, so I would drop some bottles here, but if you are a bit insecure about mixes, what you could do is use something like this. Um, I don't remember who does those, it's Tamiya or something like this, but those small cups are really great to do your mixes. Like, so now I'm talking about putting the medium and the paint inside here, controlling your consistency, and then priority pouring it over into the airbrush. And the great thing about those is that, uh, okay, they come in pack of like uh, 10 or 20 or I don't know what, but I have a bunch, so I don't need to clean them. Because um, obviously, once you have made your mix, you put this in the airbrush, and while you airbrush, the leftovers in here are gonna start drying. And this dried paint, you don't want to put it back in the airbrush. Again, you don't want to risk it uh, going inside the airbrush. So it, it's great, like, I don't know, have a, a plastic box, you toss them inside there and do your uh, dishes at the end of a painting session. But this is a great way to, yeah, circumvent the, the problem of mixing. Um, and inks, yes, inks, the thing about inks is that they dry um, glossy, they have a glossy finish. So in order to kill it, you can either add a couple of drops of ultra matte varnish uh, inside your mix that you are airbrushing, or you can just airbrush over with ultra matte. But I think it's better to put ultra matte inside the paint because maybe you will like over, like spray with ultra matte after you're done, and then you will look at me and be like, "Oh fuck, there's some ink that's went inside this small corner, like under in the armpit or what." And I haven't thought about everything uh, matte varnish there. Whereas if matte varnish is already in the in the mix, like it will be matte everywhere where your glossy paint, the previously glossy paint ended, and. Uh, uh, so with inks, I uh, don't use additives. I like more than the ultra matte. Like I know, uh, but if wait because of course, like this is not true. Nothing is true about what I'm saying. Uh, for my zenitals, sometimes I do dilute it. Like if I'm painting. Uh, like higher standard and I want my my zenithal to be really smooth because I'm gonna spray some Doomfire uh, magenta here to make a really nice and smooth cape, let's say. Then I don't want to have like the small dot 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 dots uh, that have that the airbrush has produced. So for this I dilute, I dilute my uh, white. Uh, wouldn't the glossy finish be good for contrast paint? Uh, yeah, if you want paint to flow on top, uh, that would be uh, that would be something to look for. Um, but gloss, remember also that it, the glossy means that uh, like the the surface is flat, so paint maybe adheres less to the to the surface. Whereas if it's matte, you have a lot of uh, asperities. And then uh, maybe I should do my fingers here. Uh, and then uh, the, the, the paint idea is easier. But yeah, depending on the result, like it, it can be something that uh, that you might want to be looking for. I know that if you want to uh, put oils, like you want a glossy finish because you want uh, like an uh, oil washes or something. Uh, so yeah, that could be that could be something interesting to to look for. Uh, yeah, what uh, uh, cleaning between colors? Uh, I'm looking at my uh, what I wanted to say. Yeah, pressure, distance, consistency. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, something very important I have to tell you. Uh, trigger usage. So when uh, I use my airbrush, 
the way to use the airbrush, and this is, if there is one absolute truth in this class, it's this one. Uh, so you press to release the air, and you pull to release the paint, and then you close like the, the needle, and then you release the air. You never want to like open the paints with no air flowing. This will just make a mess. Uh, so whenever you, you always want to have air coming whenever you do anything and um, yeah so usually also to and, and having air flowing when you're not releasing paint it will also allow for the air for the paint drops that are on the needle to really be pushed away uh, like sp sprayed so what you want to do usually how I use my airbrush is I put some air and then I put some paint pshht, pshht, and I paint like this like I would uh, paint some paint a line like like this cover like this cover like this and don't be looking for opaque perfect coverage on the first layer whatever you're doing like uh, even if it's priming like I would if, if I prime my models with the airbrush, I would do like two, three layers. Uh, airbrush like this. And you can also use the, the airflow to dry the layer. Like if it's really thin layers, you can dry it a bit with the, with the airbrush. And this is very useful if you want to uh, use the airbrush to put filters. Uh, what I mean by filters... So, yeah. Um, and this is maybe the last use of the airbrush that I want to talk about. Uh, filters, I will show you some pictures, uh, what I have. No filters here. Yeah, uh, so on this mini, I would have a base, for example, like really rough transition. This is from a technique from Sergio Calvo. I went for, to workshop, like I uh, got a bit more explanations. So those those layers here on the leg, uh, they are a bit rough. Uh, I went and uh, smoothed them a bit, maybe I added in transition. But you kind of end up your painting stage with those harsh transitions, let's say, like you don't try to smooth them with the pen paint. <laughs> and then, uh, here you can see the same thigh, uh, you still see a bit some transitions, like from the top strap to the dress, to the like, cloak thing. But here's where I would add some tones, and this is, uh, for example, great use for this uh, warlock purple, or, or like I would maybe mix it with some sun yellow to get a more reddish uh, tone and add some color, blend the layers and yeah, add some interest, like, like on, the, on the chest piece. Here I added some brown filters, here I did some green and this would be like really thin down paint. Uh, here on the axe, you can see a bit also like the, the small nuances on top of, and bottom. Um, and, and for this, what you do is, uh, in the airbrush, it's maybe like three drops of, uh, three drops of uh, water, three drops of thinner. I will remove this picture from the front of the screen. And then, then for this use, I put the paint from the drop bottle on the wet palette and I dip the tip of my brush inside it and I mix it inside. Like it has to be very diluted. And basically if you airbrush and you see any change, you've done it wrong. Uh, so what I need to, what I do or in, in this case is I airbrush and I look with the reflection of the light, where is it wet? Okay, I put paint there, and this is how I know if it's uh, what I've done and if I aim correctly. And in this case, since the lasers are so thin and so diluted, uh, drying the paint is great because, yeah, maybe it's just a small surface, like you just want a, a small green reflection in this part of the, of the axe. And then, uh, yeah, you cannot like, do all your 
and like as do with priming, like I'm priming the whole model, then I'm going again, and the first part why I prime has dry, like it's not, it doesn't work like this uh, you know, on small surfaces. So you like psh, press psh, some paint psh, like this, and then you can like my finger still pressed and dry the paint a bit. Psh. Um, yeah, so that was a small parenthesis about uh, filters with the airbrush. Um, and so filters, obviously, different consistency, different, uh, much, much more diluted. Um, so you might want to lower the pressure of your of the compressor. Uh, usually, I'm working at. Oh, I don't know. I think this is psi. Yeah, around 15 psi, 1520. Uh, but maybe you might want to go lower if your paint is really diluted. And uh, and yeah, if, if you want to apply thin layers like this, it's really important to let the layer dry. Like to apply a thin layer, let it dry uh, before you continue. Uh, because otherwise, paint is going to build up on the surface and you're blowing air on the surface. And the air is going to push, like blow away the paint. And this will cause you spider webbing when yeah like you have like webs uh, created on the on the surface so go gentle take your time uh, and uh, and yeah many layers when this bad boy clogs if you have about five minutes left so i, I would like to go through this with you uh, when this clogs and I have a problem, I'll just make a bit of space on my desk. Uh, first thing, uh, take a deep breath, like it's annoying as hell, like you want to be painting, you want to be at working, and now you have to fix this, but you really need it to uh, keep cool uh, when, when you do this. So, pa pa pa, remove the paint, clean the paint, okay? Uh, you can add some clean water, if you want to clean, like, a bit more and remove it inside the dirty water. Then open here, tuck, pull out the needle. And uh, when it's clogged, I always, when I open the airbrush, I always want to have the tip of the no, no, the hose, uh, uh, the nose nozzle uh, facing down in case there is some paint that is going to flow that I haven't cleaned properly maybe because if the paint starts flowing back through the air then it's going to be really difficult to clean it so this is what you want to do and then you can open the tip uh, you can check uh, put this check if there is any paint here looks good okay I'm going to push it, put it on the side and where the problem lies often is in this guy uh, so now, okay, it's going to be impossible to see on the webcam, but if you look through it, you should see a dot of light on the other side. If you don't, uh, then it's probably messed up. So what you can do is take uh, clean water, I this correctly, take clean water, go above the dirty water, and what I do is I try to stick it through there and pipe some water through this guy to hopefully push away the paint that is dry there. And I would <laughs> blow inside. Okay, do I see some light? Yeah, or wait, it's not completely round shape in here. So then I would take my needle. Uh, if you're careful, you can use, I mean, I'm just using my normal needle, uh, but if you have some old needles, leftovers, uh, you can, you can use it for this uh, purpose and then I would go and okay the focus is really bad but yeah now you see kind of that my needle is going out the, this thing and so I use it to gently push the dried paint onto this uh, one thing yeah before you do that of course you clean the needle because uh, clogging can also be caused by some paint drying on the tip um, I would do this step of cleaning, uh, cleaning the needle thoroughly, depending on what I'm doing. Like if I'm just doing some 
uh, some filters with the airbrush on, on the airbrush session. I probably am I'm good enough with cleaning the airbrush uh, just with water at the end, spraying out the, the, the remaining of the paint and I don't really need to open. But if I'm, let's say, airbrushing conscious paints or inks, like those will stay on the needle. I will see the color on the needle, needle, and I really don't want the paint to stay there until my next session. Like it's really easy to clean it now, it's very difficult to clean it later. So I, I maybe this, this is another product I haven't mentioned, airbrush cleaner. So after cleaning the airbrush with water, I would pop some drops of, uh, maybe like 10 ish drops, or I don't know what, uh, until there, there, like this, of airbrush cleaner. Uh, I would, yeah, spray it out through this. Uh, and then at the end of the session, you can also use airbrush cleaner. It's really good to dissolve some paint that might have dried on the, on the cap. So you can put some drops on some kitchen paper or the q tips clean inside here uh, and uh, you what I do also is open those three parts when I clean my airbrush and oh, oh, this go and drop them in a small container uh, with a bit of uh, airbrush cleaner inside let them sit there for like five ish minutes the time for me to clean the rest and then I rinse them in water uh, dry them, blow, blow the, the water remaining in, in them, and then um, then I will put them back together. Um, so this will, yeah, the, like have a good clean uh, when they got really messy by some heavy usage. Uh, it's a really good thing to do. And uh, yeah, I think I, I've told... Uh, a lot of things. I hope you guys got some uh, interesting uh, informations uh, from this class today. Uh, yeah, I realized I could be talking for much longer, but hopefully uh, I told you the most of uh, other things that you need for use, uh, using a brush. And yeah, as I mentioned, don't take everything I said for words. Uh, for, for like, a go check, your, cross check your sources. Uh, and uh, do your experiments. Uh, you should be clogging your airbrush a lot. Then yeah, you should just like keep cool. Uh, learn learn the techniques. Get the routines. Like when you when you practice a bit, it doesn't take that long. It's not that much of a burden to clean the airbrush. Like I know what I'm doing. It's just tack tack tack. I do this. Uh, it takes like five minutes, and everything is back to to the drawer. Um, so yeah, I hope uh, I hope uh, it was interesting to watch. Um, more there are more classes coming on the events. The next class about freehand uh, starts at uh, at five uh, at six. Uh, five was mine. Um, and yeah, maybe last moments for questions. If there's anything, um, but. I don't see much popping here uh, on the chat. So grab a coffee, have a break, and uh, yeah, uh, have a have fun painting. Bye.